Eating disorders such as anorexia, bulimia, ARFID, binge eating disorder, and orthorexia, among others, affect millions of people every day. It is said by the National Association of Anorexia Nervosa and Associated Disorders that 30 million people are currently suffering from one. This is roughly 1 in 10 people. 4 in 10 people have either personally experienced one or know someone close to them who has. Are these people you? Well, three of them are us. Hi. Hi. Hi, my name is Lynette. My name is Matt. I am Sam. And I have an eating disorder. And I have an eating disorder. I'm gonna have an eating disorder. But before we get into our stories, I want to tell you what you're getting into. Eating disorders, by definition, are disorders characterized by any type of disordered patterns of eating. Of course, I'm sure you already knew that. I'm creating this video for you to hopefully provide an inside look into these disorders. It's one thing to be able to read about them and recall basic information and facts, but the one thing that textbooks can't do, provide personal experience or emotional connections. All three stories you are about to hear are extremely different and each provide a unique look onto the whole entire spectrum of eating disorders. Not all of them are girls, not all of them are anorexia or bulimia. It's an accurate depiction of who and how people are affected, which is very differently. As you watch, keep this in mind. Now I'm 17 years old, but when I was 15 or 16, I was first diagnosed with my eating disorder, ARFID. ARFID stands for Avoidant Restrictive Food Intake Disorder. So yeah, for most of my junior year in high school, I was struggling with that. I was out of school, I was in a treatment program, so when I was 14, I was diagnosed with anorexia and it all started around like 6th grade. I was, I was fat and chubby and uh, people started bullying me and calling me names like Chubzo. I don't know why. So, so when I was little, I was a skinny kid and then one day my grandma said, because I would never eat unhealthy things. And my grandma told me that, oh, McDonald's is healthy, french fries is healthy. Like, put french fries on your hot dogs, it's a vegetable. The, bur the burger is like a meat, it's protein, the bread is a grain. And then, whenever she, like, since I would be such a picky e eater, she always made me eat things. And then, I started gaining weight. And then once I hit middle school, that's when it hit me when everyone was, like, calling me fat. Seventh grade. I started a YouTube channel. Everyone made fun of me for that. Everyone said I was too fat to be on it. I was too fat to be in a relationship. I was too fat to do sports. Basically, I was too fat to do anything. And it just affected me and my mindset, which made me think, how can I do this? How can I lose weight? The words that these kids were saying to me really got to me and hit me hard. So I decided to try to lose weight, but I didn't know how. I ended up going the unhealthy route and stopped eating completely. And Basically, I just became insanely afraid of eating because I didn't want to be in pain. And that's all I could associate eating with was pain. So basically, I just quit eating. I was like, well, if that's all it's gonna do for me, then I'm just not gonna eat at all. I actually went on a normal diet and that didn't do anything. I couldn't lose weight. So that tore me apart, but I told my mom that it was working when really it didn't work at all. And I started throwing up and just not eating. If I do eat something, even if it's just like some bread, I would instantly regret it and go to the gym and exercise for hours just to get rid of that. I would make myself throw up if I ate because I'd be scared to eat because I would be afraid of just gaining any weight. I would just not eat at all. Like if I got home, I'd make sure I'd be asleep before my mom did so she wouldn't ask me if I ate or not. Um, the eighth grade Spanish trip, Everyone knew that like I threw up in the bathroom and they thought it was because I didn't feel well But then a few people came up to me and said 
did you make yourself throw up? I said, no, I didn't. And I just slid straight to their face. I dropped like about 20 pounds in a really short amount of time, which is really unhealthy. I ended up losing about 20 pounds um, over a very short span of time. I'm not exactly sure how many months, but it wasn't a long time. And 10 of those pounds were within like two weeks. When I was in eighth grade, at the beginning of the year, I was 189 pounds. And halfway through the year, not even like two to four months in, I lost 52 pounds. I went from 189 pounds to 137 pounds. No one even noticed. So for me, I started to notice that I was really tired all the time. I would come home from school and just sleep. That's all I could do. Um, I would play softball and when I played, I would fall when I was playing and they would say, oh, it's your ankle. And they just thought it was my ankle. So they would think like me falling was because of just my past injuries. They didn't think anything else of it. So all the not eating got to my head and it took me out of school. I didn't go to school for a few weeks didn't talk to my parents, they didn't know anything about it, and it just messed with my head and I was depressed for a bit. I would not go out with friends a lot, like I couldn't function normally at all. I couldn't concentrate, I'm normally a really smart person but I could not focus. And I feel like a lot of the mental space that I had left was focused around like the fears that I had concerning my disorder and food. Like that's all I could think about so I couldn't think about anything else. Like when we went out to say someone's house for parties for the sports and playing softball like the after parties that they would have, they would be like, oh Sam are you hungry? I'd just be like, no, I'm not. I ate earlier before the game my mom fed me. Mm -hmm. My mom, I'm not hungry, I'll eat there. And I just go back and forth with that all the time. Yeah. And obviously since I was so skinny, I couldn't function and do normal things people do every day. Everything was a lot harder for me to do. Yeah, so I started becoming a lot less social. I lost a lot of friends that way. I started losing interest in things that were super interesting to me, like my dogs, um, school too. I hated going to school. Now lunches became such a source of anxiety. It uh, completely overpowered my life and I didn't, it made me feel like I wasn't good enough. I didn't want people to look at me. I just became so obsessed with thoughts that really, looking back at it, um, didn't really make any sense. Quit my dreams, I decided I didn't even want to be a doctor anymore because I just couldn't see my future really going anywhere. And that was kind of scary because it's a really big change to go. So I would be in classes and I would get dizzy and I would just say, I'm dizzy, can I go get a drink? And that would most likely be it. Nobody had any clue what was going on. I really never told anyone what was going on. And So no one, no one noticed me trying to lose weight at first, maybe because I'm just a guy and it's not normal or expected for guys to starve themselves, but then I did it more and more and then people started to notice. And then that's when finally I went and tried to get help. My mom didn't even notice and I live with her. She noticed that I was getting skinnier, but I just told her I was on a diet. She was like, oh, okay. Actually, when I was super emaciated, I would go on Instagram and look at like people that were fine. And I was like, I just wish that I could be like that. Um, so I scrolled through social media and go on fitness pages. And I saw 
all these guys, buff and huge, and I wanted to be like that. I became obsessed trying to be like them. When Vine was a thing, and you just see all of what they're posting and they're on Instagram or anything, just made it ten times harder. Or you'd see all these skinny girls on Instagram that look so good and they look so perfect, even though they have their own insecurities too. It just makes you think, like, I just want to look just like them. For my disorder, it was extremely life-threatening. I was in the hospital for almost a month, and I had a feeding tube, and I was dangerously underweight. I was in a partial hospitalization program after I got out of the hospital, so not breakfast. So they stay there for lunch and dinner, and then they go home after. After that, you get into IOP, which is the outpatient program, and that's when you just come in for pretty much a dinner and a couple therapies and then you go home. And then there's like full outpatient, which is just going to a therapist every now and again, not really in a program or anything. So when I, I was in treatment, I met with a bunch of professionals. I was with a psychologist for a few months and like a dietitian to help me get back on track. With I had an ex-boyfriend and Eventually, he just made me start eating like a slice of an apple, banana, then it turned into a whole apple, and then it just went up little by little. And if you just start little by little, it helps even though you still have the thoughts in your mind to do it. Food is neither good nor bad. It's just food, and every single food has nutrients that we need to live. Another important thing to remember is that everyone comes in all different shapes and sizes, and as much as Instagram seems like a perfect world, and it seems like you need to fit one certain ideal, you really don't. If I go back to my sixth, sixth grade self, I would uh, not listen to all those people, because if I knew back then that it would get into my head, I would never try to change who I am. Because if you stay true to yourself, you'll be happier than trying to impress other people. I encourage all of you, if you're just like me, to go out and get some help if you need it. Because it's not worth it if you stay to yourself. Because it is helpful. I tell them talk to your parents or your mom if you're a girl. Or if you had to, your mom would probably understand more than your dad. Or if you had a sister, talk to her or talk to the people you're closest with. Because even though I said earlier, talking sometimes doesn't help. But it can if they care enough about you. There are helplines um, available for people that think that they may have one or their loved one may have one. First, I would encourage you to talk to your school counselors, talk to a teacher, talk to any adult that you trust. The National Eating Disorder Association's helpline is 1-800-931-2237. This helpline offers support Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And they also have an online chat function available on their website. Hello, uh, my name is Jim Jerzyk. I'm Lynette's father. Uh, you know, we initially were thinking, well, she'll be uh, out of the hospital and everything will be back to, to normal. You know within you know maybe a week or a month or so but that isn't the way it turned out yeah we had we had to adjust and then you just wonder is is this really helping just, yeah I would say a lot of, uh, of, of worry you know is this the right thing to do 